Okay, in this video, we're going to talk about something called the trigonometric ratios, or sometimes just the trig ratios. And the trig ratios are just the ratios formed by the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. All right? Now, that's all they are, just ratios. Now, we know what a ratio is. It's a comparison of two numbers. And the ratios in particular that we're going to look at, be looking at here, the trig ratios, the two numbers are going to be the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. Now, there are actually six trig ratios. We are only going to work with three, the three most commonly used trig ratios, and those are sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the names of the three trig ratios we're going to work with. Now, in particular, when we talk about sine, cosine, and tangent, we're talking about the sine of an angle, the cosine of an angle, and the tangent of an angle. So, for example, it's going to be the sine, cosine, and tangent of one of the acute angles of our right triangle. You can take the sine, cosine, or tangent of a right angle, but for our purposes, we're just going to be talking about the sine, cosine, and tangent of the two acute angles of a right triangle. So, first we want to start with what's the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent? Well, the sine of an angle is defined as the opposite leg over the hypotenuse. That's the two sides of the triangle that form the ratio, that form the sine ratio, the opposite leg and the hypotenuse. The cosine, the definition of the cosine of an angle is the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is defined as the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Now, if you'll notice, we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. There's a mnemonic that you may have heard of that is SOH, CAH, TOA, often pronounced SOKATOA, and this is just a way to remember these three trig ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. So SOKATOA helps to remember, helps you to remember the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, well, let's take a look at what exactly we mean when we say the opposite leg over the hypotenuse or the adjacent leg over the hypotenuse. So here's this same right triangle that we had before, triangle PQR. And when we talk about opposite leg, adjacent leg, and hypotenuse, the first thing to note is that to talk about the opposite leg or the adjacent leg, we have to talk about a specific angle. So first let's look at angle P, is this angle right here on this right triangle. The leg that's opposite angle P, the opposite leg, if his, this is my angle P, well the opposite leg is this leg here, QR. Side QR, that's opposite angle P. If I want to talk about the adjacent leg, that is the leg of the triangle that's adjacent to angle P, remember adjacent just means next to, well, if this is angle P, then this side right here, this leg of the triangle, PR, that is the leg adjacent to this angle. When I talk about the hypotenuse, well, the hypotenuse is just side PQ of the triangle. Now, notice the reason that I didn't call side PQ of the triangle, I didn't call that my adjacent leg for angle P is because since PQ is the hypotenuse, it is not a leg. 
a leg is one of the sides of the triangle that is not the hypotenuse. All right, so these are the opposite leg, adjacent leg, and hypotenuse for angle P. Well, let's identify the opposite leg, adjacent leg, and hypotenuse for angle Q. So here's angle Q. The leg opposite angle Q is this leg here. That's leg PR. The adjacent leg, the leg adjacent to angle Q, so here's angle Q, the adjacent leg is going to be QR. And again, notice it must be QR because PQ is not a leg, that's the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse for angle Q, it's the same as the hypotenuse for angle P, which is PQ. So, notice that for angle P and angle Q, the hypotenuse is always the same. There's only one hypotenuse for a right triangle, but the opposite leg and the adjacent leg are different for angle P than they are for angle Q. So let's review these here using sine, cosine, and tangent of angle P. So the trig ratio, sine of angle P, the abbreviation, the way we write this in kind of shorthand notation, looks like this. SIN P, that means the sine of angle P. Cosine of angle P, we write COS P, cosine of angle P. And tangent, we write tan angle P. The definition, again, the definition of sine we remember from so katoa, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So for this particular triangle, we want the sine of angle P. Well, the sine of angle P is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is QR. And hypotenuse is PQ. Cosine of angle P. Cosine, we remember from so katoa, so ka, C-A-H. So we want adjacent over hypotenuse. So for angle P, here's angle P, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. My adjacent side is PR and my hypotenuse is PQ. So PR over PQ would be the cosine of angle P. The tangent of angle P, so katoa, T-O-A, means I have opposite over adjacent. So for angle P, my opposite side is QR. And my adjacent side for angle P is PR. All right, let's take a look at a few examples using the trig ratios. Okay, example number one. I have a right triangle here, triangle DEF, and I've got the lengths of the sides of the right triangle are 8, 15, and 17, and I would like to calculate the actual numerical value in this case for sine, cosine, and tangent of angle D and sine, cosine, and tangent of angle E. And on your, uh, on your notes, it says to express each one of these trig ratios as a fraction and as a decimal. So let's do that. So let me go ahead and just do all of them as a fraction first. So sine of D, and I remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So let's see, let me find angle D. Here's angle D, opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite is 15, and hypotenuse is 17. So there's the sine of angle D. Cosine of angle D, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And for angle D, my adjacent side is 8. My hypotenuse is 17. Tangent of angle D, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So opposite is oops, opposite over adjacent. So opposite for angle D, opposite is 15 and adjacent is 8. So actually, let's go ahead and 
let's go ahead and write those numbers down as decimals also. So let me get my calculator. 15 divided by 17. And I'm going to do this to four decimal places. Our trig ratios we normally will do to four decimal places. So 0.8824. Eight divided by seventeen point four seven zero oh six, and let's see, fifteen divided by eight one point eight seven five. All right, so let's do the same thing for angle D, or excuse me, for angle E. So sine again is opposite over hypotenuse. So we're working with angle E now. Opposite is eight. Hypotenuse is 17. Cosine of E, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So for angle E, adjacent is 15, and hypotenuse is 17. Tangent of angle E, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent of E, opposite is 8, and adjacent is 15. All right, so there's all those trig ratios in fraction form. Let's calculate those in decimal form. 8 divided by 17, 0 0.4706. 15 divided by 17, 0.8824. And 8 divided by 15, 0.53. All right, example number two. Now, in this case, we're given a right triangle, but we're not given the lengths of any sides. All we're given is the measure of the angles of the right triangle, the measure of the two acute angles of the right triangle. Well, here's where we are going to begin to see the power of the trig ratios, because it turns out that it doesn't really matter what the actual lengths of the sides of these triangles are, as long as it's a right triangle, and I know the measure of one of the angles, I can calculate the trig ratios using my calculator. And that's because for any right triangle of any size, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of 38 degrees, they're always going to be the same number no matter how large that triangle happens to be. So first off, and you notice in your notes it says make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And if you're using one of the TI-83 or TI-84 calculators, there's a button here on this top row here that says mode. And if you push that mode button, then you're going to get a screen where the third line down, it says radian and degree. You want to make sure that the degree word is what's highlighted. So if it's not, then move your cursor down there and select degree so that we'll put your calculator in degree mode. Okay, so I'm in degree mode. I want to take the sine of 38, so all I need to do is push the sine button. And again, on the TI-84, the sine button is this button right here. So I push sine and then I enter 38, and then I hit enter, and I get sine of 38 degrees equals 0.6157. Cosine of 38, I do the same thing, only this time using the cosine button. So cosine of 38 is 0.7880. And tangent of 38 is 0.7813. All right, now let's do the same thing with the other acute angle in the triangle, the 52 degree angle. Sine of 52, I just punch in sine 52, enter 0 0.7880. Cosine of 52, 0.6157. And tangent of 52, 1 1.2, 1.280. Oops, 1.2, yeah, 1.280. And now I have sine, cosine, and tangent for each one of my two angles. All right, now example number three. Here I'm given a right triangle, and I have one side length here. This is for, I have one angle length here, 53, and I'm asked to find the length of 
this side of the triangle, which is labeled X. Well, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use both of these two methods that I previously used, the method where I use my calculator to find the sine, cosine, or tangent of an angle, and the fact that I know the definition of all the trig ratios as the ratios of two sides of a triangle. So let's see what that looks like. So the first thing I want to do here, I'm looking for X. I have this side, and I have this angle. So looking at this angle, this 53 degree angle, I notice that the side that I'm looking for is opposite my angle, and the side that I'm given is adjacent to my angle. So I have opposite and adjacent. So I ask myself, which one of the trig ratios gives me a relationship between the opposite side and the adjacent side? Well, I remember that the tangent trig ratio is defined as opposite over adjacent, so ka toa, T-O-A. So I'm going to be using the tangent trig ratio to solve my problem. Okay, so now that I've selected this, that's basically that's my step number one. Now that I've selected my correct trig ratio, now I just want to fill in all the information that I have from the triangle. So tangent of what angle? Tangent of this angle here, 53 degrees, equals opposite, my opposite side is x, over adjacent, my adjacent side is 4. Well, now I have an actual equation here that I can solve. So I'm going to start out by calculating the value of tangent 53 degrees. So I take my calculator, tangent 53 is 1.327. So 1.327 equals x over 4. Now I'm going to put 1.327 over 1 so that I make my equation look like a proportion because I know how to solve a proportion, I just cross multiply. So 1 times x is x, that's equal to 4 times 1.327. So x then equals 4 times 1.327 and x equals 5.308. And I just use my trig ratios to find the length of this side of my triangle. All right, let's take a look at example number four. Once again, I have a right triangle. I'm looking for one side of the right triangle. And this, now this time I have the length of my hypotenuse and I have this angle right here. Well, once again, the first step is to choose the correct trig ratio that I can use to solve for x. So I have this angle and I'm looking for the adjacent side and I have the hypotenuse. So I would like to use a trig ratio that has a relationship between the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Well I remember that from so katoa cosine is defined as adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine is the trig ratio that I want to use. So after I write this down, now I just need to fill in the actual information that I have in my triangle. The cosine of what angle? 60 degrees equals adjacent is my x value. Hypotenuse is 28. Now once again, I have a proportion. I want to find the cosine of 60. Let me go ahead and find that so I can write that number in. Cosine of 60 is 0.5. So I have 0.5 equals x over 28. Again, I want to put that 0.5 over 1 to make a proportion. Now I just need to cross multiply and solve my proportion. 1 times x is x. And 0.5 times 28 is 14. And I have the value of x is equal to 14 using my trig ratios. Now, example number 5. Again, I have a right triangle and I have some information here, but now this time I'm looking for two different values. I'm looking for the length of this side and I'm looking for the length of this side. Well, this type of problem you solve in pretty much the same way as you did these previous problems, except now you have to basically solve for two values and we're just going to do those one at a time. So let's start out by trying to solve for x. All right, so again, the first thing I want to do, just like I did up here, I want to figure out which one of my trig ratios gives me a relationship between the side opposite my angle and the hypotenuse. Well, opposite over hypotenuse, I remember, is sine. 
So I'm going to use sine to find the value of x. So let me fill in my information here. Sine of what angle? 22. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so my opposite side is x. My hypotenuse is 14. And I have my equation set up. And let me start out by finding out what is the sine of 22 degrees. So sine of 22, I put that in my calculator and I get 0 0.3746. 0 0.3746 equals x over 14. Let me put this over 1 so that I make it look like a proportion. I cross multiply, I get 1 times x equals 14 times 0.3746 equals 5.244. All right, so now I have x. This time I'm not finished, however, because I still have to find out what y is. Okay, well, for y, I'm using the same angle. This time I have the adjacent side that I'm looking for and my hypotenuse. So adjacent and hypotenuse, that's going to be cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Again, I fill in my information, cosine of what angle? 22 equals adjacent over hypotenuse. My adjacent side this time is y over hypotenuse, which is 14. And let's see, cosine of 22, 0.9272. equals y over 14. Again, I have a proportion. I'm going to cross multiply to solve my proportion. 1 times y is y. 0 0.9272 equals 0 0.9272 times 14 equals 12.9872. And now I've just found x and why. Now you have uh, one or two more examples in your notes. I want you to do those on your own and we'll take a look at the answers tomorrow in class.